honor for me to participate in this very interesting workshop and, and I want to discuss with you some aspects of uh, stroke prevention from the perspective of a vascular surgeon. I added some minor titles because I intend to talk about symptomatic and asymptomatic patients. Vascular surgery, as you might know, is a fairly young discipline and for many years carotid artery surgery only consisted of ligation and vessel occlusion to allow survival of mostly wounded soldiers. And it was in 1914 um, that Hans von Habra Krems Hohenstein, an Austrian vascular surgeon, performed the first operation to restore carotid continuity in Innsbruck, where I come from. And it took some more 40 years until Eastcott, Pickering and the Bakey established carotid endarterectomy as a standard procedure as we do still use it nowadays. And this new technique was wildly used and um, in sometimes needed to prove its stroke prevention feasibility and ability. And you all know these data from the late 1990s coming from the NASID and ECST data where it was finally proven that carotid endarterectomy had a significant stroke prevention benefit in patients with recently symptomatic stenosis compared to best medical treatment only. So if we talk about symptomatic patients, the role of a vascular surgeon seems to be fairly clear. Yes, we do have a stroke prevention benefit in those settings. The natural stroke risk is, in this situation, very well balanced by the periprocedural complication rate. But there is a huge debate, meanwhile, however, on treating patients with asymptomatic stenosis, and I want to focus on this a little bit. With this improved best medical treatment, uh, we do get the impression that the natural stroke risk goes down to below 1% per year, and it cannot be balanced anymore by the periprocedural complication rate. So, who else than Ross Naylor, all of you might know him, should have discussed this controversy in detail very recently, and I can only recommend you to read this article. And when you cover this topic, you can quickly realize that the same arguments are used in totally different ways, depending on if you're pro or cons treatment. So we have this level one evidence from the ACAS and ACST1 trial, which is meanwhile questioned because of the improved best medical treatment and those changed incidence rates. On the other hand, it's reported that stroke uh, incidences go down to uh, smaller numbers, as I already mentioned. But it can also be that with this improved best medical treatment, also the outcome of revascularization procedures improves. So it's really a debate. Let's have a quick look at this uh, natural stroke risk and go back to the year 1986. In this series of 500 individuals with asymptomatic carotid stenosis, so with a neck bruit, um, the stroke incidence rate at one year uh, several vascular ischemic event rate was 6%. Strokes only was 1.7%. Other cardiovascular events like cardiac ischemic events was 7% and death 4%. And in this study, parameters like severe or progressing ICA stenosis, a concomitant uh, heart disease and male gender were parameters predicting neurological events. Talking about nowadays stroke incidence rates, I decided to show you these data from the Oxfask registry from the year 2010, where patients with asymptomatic stenosis who underwent treatment for a contralateral symptomatic stenosis were followed. And among those patients, you see that the ipsilateral stroke rate was only 0.34%. Uh, TIA rates 1.8%, so a significant decrease in incidence rates between 1986 and 2010. And this is most probably due to this improved best medical therapy everybody is talking about. And this is also uh, covered in this meta-analysis of 41 studies where the summary incidence rate uh, is 1.7%. And the authors point out that there is a clear time dependence with the cut at the new millennium. So all studies published before the year 2000 
reported higher incidence rates of about 2.3%, and starting after that, incidence rates were as low as 1%. The European Society of Vascular Surgery very recently uh, published new guidelines on the treatment of carotid artery disease. And here is what you can find for symptomatic and asymptomatic stenosis. So let's focus on the asymptomatic ones. And after considering some patient characteristics and plaque features, you get a carotid endarterectomy recommendation as should recommendation and still a make recommendation for carotid artery stenting under same conditions. And although most of you might know those uh, data, I decided to show you where this evidence comes from. From the surgical point of view, the Veterans Affair Cooperative Study was the first one um, conducted to review the stroke prevention benefit of carotid and natrectomy in asymptomatic patients conducted in the early 1980s, and interesting to see is that all patients included in this trial received an intra-arterial angiography prior to randomization. After that, the asymptomatic carotid atherosclerosis study provided a significant number of patients, and in this setting, at least all surgical patients underwent this carotid, this intra-arterial angiography. And this caveat might be new to some of you, half of the complications counted for carotid endarterectomy resulted from these intra-arterial angiographies prior to treatment. And, this, and finally, the ACST-1 study provided a significant number of patients and most of the evidence we do have so far on this topic. And if we have a look at the 10-year results of the ACST-1 trial, you see that the stroke prevention benefit of carotid endarterectomy still remains after this long follow-up period. And what was also highlighted from this data was this decreasing stroke incidence rate in the follow-up period. So we have a 1.1% incidence rate in the first follow-up years, declining to 0.7% in the remaining follow-up years, most probably due to this improved best medical therapy. And for me, it was very interesting to see also from ACST1 data. Do you have to come to an end? Yeah, I think it's not 10 minutes yeah. so far. So, sorry. Um, that the statin therapy is the most important component of best medical treatment because after adding uh, antithrombotic therapy and antihypertensive medication, there is hardly any change in event rates. Looking at carotid artery stenting, we do have five studies so far comparing... Sorry, Barbara, we have to come to the end. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I'm not sure if it's really 10 minutes, yeah. but okay. So then I cannot show you carotid artery stenting data. Um, and let's uh, summarize quickly what I intended to say. So, uh, from a surgical point of view, carotid endarterectomy has a significant benefit in recently symptomatic patients. We meanwhile do know that stroke incidence rates in asymptomatic patients significantly declined under best medical therapy. And um, the invasive treatments carotid artery stenting and endarterectomy need to show low per procedural complications rates, presumably lower than the so far claimed 3%. We have um, good criteria to identify patients at risk to have a stroke under best medical treatment only. And the studies ACST2, ESC2, CREST2, and F3 are eagerly awaited to shed further light on this topic. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention.